Hey boys, it's Harm Nan. Today we're going to be going over 10 things that every solo player needs in Grand Theft Auto Online. Some of these things are going to be vehicles, some are going to be businesses, some are going to be weapons, and much more. So anyways, let's go ahead and get started with number 10. At number 10, we have the Duke of Death. This is a free two-seater vehicle that has very good protective properties. It is completely bulletproof from the rear, and the sides are about 50% bulletproof, depending on where you get shot. It's definitely a very early game sort of suited vehicle, but even if you are late game and you're looking for a vehicle that's going to be good to take out NPCs in contact missions, or things like Headhunter in free mode, this vehicle might just be what you're looking for. It can also take two explosives, that being a sticky bomb or an RPG before it blows up, so you can get hit by either one of those things and keep driving for at least a little while until the vehicle gets fully destroyed. Now I do have an honorable mention here, and that is of course the Karen Armored Karuma, which goes for $525,000 all the way up to $698,250. It is a lot more bullet resistant, but it does cost a good chunk of money in comparison to the free Duke of Death. However, it does have a lot better bullet protection. I'd say this thing is like 90% bulletproof probably. It's also all wheel drive, so it is a little better off road. And of course it is a four seater. So if you do play with friends occasionally, this vehicle would be good for you. Overall, I think the Duke of Death is just a little bit better because of its explosive resistance. And obviously this list is for solo players. And being that it's only a two seater, I think that it fits a little bit better. But either of these vehicles are absolutely awesome for early game players and even late game players that are planning to do contact missions or headhunter or anything of the sort. That's it for number 10, let's move on to number 9. At number 9 we have good weapons. If you want to know all the best weapons in the game, I have a detailed video going over this. But for right now, my quick tips are get yourself an assault shotgun, AP pistol, or the new SMG. Get yourself a heavy rifle, special carbine, or service carbine in the assault rifles category. For the snipers, get yourself a heavy sniper mark II. For the LMGs or SMGs category, get yourself a combat machine gun mark II. And for the heavy category, get yourself an RPG. Anything else beyond that is just extra and is a little bit more of a special use case. But make sure that you guys have some good weapons to use in online, whether it's for doing contact missions or for fighting other players. You're going to need some good guns. That's it for number 9, on to number 8. At number 8, we have an HSW or the non-HSW, Hakuchu Drag. This is the fastest motorcycle in the game, and this bike will give you the ability to complete the HSW time trial every single week, of course if you have access to it, as well as it will make doing the regular time trial that changes daily now a lot easier. The bike costs 976 grand, so if you don't have HSW, it's only going to take you 10 days as long as you do the daily time trial every single day to pay the bike off. But if you want to do the HSW time trial and you have access to HSW on your platform, it's going to cost you another $1,450,000 on top of the $976,000. However, if you do have HSW on this vehicle, it does become the fastest land vehicle in the game for racing or for getting from point A to point B, as long as it's not in a straight line. The top speed is really good on this thing, but it does have some great maneuverability. Overall, it is a very good bike, and it can make you a ton of money if you guys are dedicated enough to do the time trials every day and the HSW time trial weekly if you have access to it. That's it for number eight. Let's move on to number seven. For our first business on the list, I think that the agency is a great business that you guys should absolutely own if you are a solo player because this business is very solo friendly. It will give you access to security contracts, payphone hits, and the contract, which is one of two soloable heists in Grand Theft Auto Online. As well as this, the more security contracts that you complete, up to 201 of them, will directly affect your agency safe income. Now, your agency safe income scales with the amount of contracts that you have completed, up to a maximum of $20,000 per day or every 48 minutes of real time. So, 20 grand per 48 minutes is very good. It stacks up very quickly, and if you like to go AFK like I do in online, this can make you a ton of money. Payphone hits also pay a whopping $85,000 for five to 10 minutes of work, and the contract pays $1 million upon completion, and it'll take you about one to two hours, depending on how fast you go through it. The agency also serves as the only place that you can get access to Imani tech capabilities in Grand Theft Auto Online through the agency vehicle workshop. Truly, the agency is a great business for solo players and it is going to enable you to earn a ton of money through several different ways. So if you're looking for a good solo friendly business, the agency is truly one of the best. That's it for number seven, on to number six. 
At number six, we have another business, and this is, of course, the nightclub. Now, the nightclub has received many buffs over the last year and a bit, ever since the expanded edition of GTA came out making it one of the best businesses in the game even more so. The nightclub is always very, very good, but now the nightclub safe will pay you $50,000 per in-game day or every 48 minutes for keeping the popularity maxed out. 50 grand every 48 minutes, that's not bad. And if you couple that with the agency, that's 70 grand every 48 minutes once you max out your security contracts and you have the popularity maxed out. They've also added new popularity missions into the game, which are very, very easy to complete. In fact, if you enter passive mode before going into your nightclub, you'll get a blue dot that pops up every single time as long as you don't go more than once every 48 minutes. And this will be a person that you can just simply kick out of the nightclub. It will increase your popularity back to maximum and you will get paid $10,000 for doing it. Pretty crazy, pretty awesome. That's not even mentioning the nightclub basement, which will passively accrue you goods based on other businesses that you own in GTA Online. You'll need to own the Coke Lockup, the Bunker, Counterfeit Cash, the Breaking Bad, Lab, and CEO Cargo, or a Hangar. From owning each of these and getting the respective workers in the nightclub basement, you will earn about $80,000 plus an hour passively from the basement, and the sale missions are always only going to be one vehicle making these a lot easier to complete. The nightclub is definitely a great business, guys. You need to own this one in online. It is definitely a must own for a solo player. Here at number five, we have the FH1 Hunter, coming in at $3,100,000 up to $4,123,000. For anyone who needs a helicopter, look no further than the FH1 Hunter. It's one of the fastest helicopters in the entire game, and it is the fastest armed helicopter. It's very, very good. Now, the pilot gets access to a seven missile barrage and spammable homing missiles as well as bombs. It has some decent armor, meaning that it can take about three homing missiles before blowing up, and it makes quick work of anyone standing in your way. The homing missiles are particularly responsive. They're actually very good on the FH-100, and if by some chance you do have a second player playing with you or just a random in the lobby, they can access the co-pilot pilot seat on your FH-100 and gain access to the gun mounted on the bottom of it which will one-shot players and most vehicles that are unarmored. Absolutely crazy helicopter, definitely a good one for grinding out particularly security contracts as well as headhunter and things like that or just to simply get around. That's it for the FH-100, on to number 4. Next up we have the F-160 Raiju. This is a brand new plane in GTA Online that got added with the Los Santos Mercenaries update. It goes for $5,141,250 if you have the trade price unlocked. If not, it's going to cost you $6,855,000. This is the best fighter jet in Grand Theft Auto Online. It has stealth mode as well as VTOL, so it's similar to the Akula in that regard where it has the stealth mode, but it also has the VTOL similar to the Hydra, although the VTOL is a lot more responsive on the Raju than it is on the Hydra. It's also extremely fast and the acceleration of the Raju is unmatched by any plane in GTA Online. And of course it does have the ability to get across the map in pretty much record time and off the radar. So it's going to be a very good one to have in free mode as well as just for getting around and grinding out like I said security contracts or headhunter and things like that. This plane is absolutely awesome and it is a must own. Next up at number three, we have the Acid Lab, another business. This is gonna cost you 750 grand to buy the initial Acid Lab, plus another 250 grand for the equipment upgrade, which is gonna allow you to earn a lot more money with the Acid Lab. The Acid Lab is an extremely solo friendly business, potentially more so than any other business in the entire game. Sales are always a single vehicle and that vehicle is upgradable. It is the Acid Lab delivery bike, of course. It's relatively cheap to purchase and you can gain access to it by completing the first dose missions from the Los Santos Drug Wars DLC. The Brigade 6x6 also doubles as an extremely good tank in GTA Online. It is the second most armored vehicle in the entire game. So it's a very good vehicle to own. The Acid Lab on a full sale will sell for $335,000 and it makes that amount in not a very long time. And the supplies are generally quite a bit cheaper in the Acid Lab than any other business in the game. The Acid Lab is a must own. Definitely look into this one, guys. That's it for number three. On to number two. At number two, we have an Imani Tech vehicle. This is the Ocelot Virtue. It goes for $2,235,000 all the way up to $2,980,000 or you can get it for completely free by completing the first and last dose missions from the Los Santos Drug Wars DLC, which of course the first dose missions will give you the Acid Lab and the second half, which is the last dose missions, will give you the Ocelot Virtue for free. 
You can put Imani Tech on this thing, like I said, and in order to do that, you will need to own the agency with the vehicle workshop. It is the fastest accelerating car on last gen and PC, and still one of the fastest accelerating vehicles, even on the new generation consoles. Of course, because it is Imani Tech, it has the ability to put on a missile lock on jammer, armor, and an oil slick proximity mine upgrade. The Oslo Virtue is an absolute must own. It truly is one of the best cars in the entire game, if not maybe even the best car in the entire game. So definitely look into this and the fact that you can get it for free is absolutely awesome. And of course at number one, the best thing that a solo player can own is the Kasatka submarine. For $2,200,000, just for the vehicle itself, you can launch the Keo Perico heist, which is one of only two solo heists in the entire game. The other of course being the contract, which you get access to with the agency. However, Keo Perico takes a little bit less time to set up and the reward is a little bit higher. So I feel like it is something that players should own for sure. It also serves as a station to dock your Toreador if you have a Toreador. And if you decide to upgrade your Kasatka, you can also store your Sparrow helicopter there, which is another great vehicle for solo players to own in online. The Kasatka is a lot of fun. You can actually drive this thing around, as I'm sure most of you guys will know. You can dive and everything. It does have torpedoes. It's just an awesome vehicle, and it's definitely one that you guys should 100% look into getting, especially if you're trying to make some money in online. So there you have it guys, that is it for the 10 things that every solo player needs in Grand Theft Auto Online. Let me know what you thought of my list in the comments down below. Are there any things that I missed? Please let me know. Leave a like if you enjoyed the video, dislike if you didn't, of course, subscribe to the channel if you guys are new, and I will see you all in the next video. Until then, take care. Peace.